All right, guys, welcome back to my channel. Today, we're going to review um, some mathematics um, that I'm gonna be adding to my model from now on. Um, and this is, you know, simple math, but what, it, what it, we're gonna be doing is we're gonna be start using the ROI, the Bayes formula, and the Kelly criterion to hone in to uh, make the model, my, my crypto investment model, more dependable. Um, and, and, you know, and ultimately arrive at a mathematical basis for the allocation exposure that should be taken. And um, so basically the way the model works right now is it we have a target and we're going to aim for the upper 30% uh, upper upper one third of crypto projects and the, the model will attempt the model runs through my brain which is me personally running through it and then it'll simply put out true or false whether we expect the project to be an upper one-third project but for now because we're in the beginning stages of you know honing in my project we're just going to call a correct call a, um, a call that is in the green basically it's at a better price than when we bought it and that's what we're going to use for now to say whether or not the project is, um, you know, wh whether or not it's doing good. But in the future, we will hone in and actually do that calculation and say, yes, a correct call is that the project was actually a 33% call. So, you know, so everything is going to be calls that I expect to be um, in the upper third, but we're going to say whether or not it was right based on whether it made it uh, in the green. And then obviously, um, you know, and then in the future, we're going to actually um, change the Bayes number to reflect uh, the actual 33% formula. Um, now, the goal of the model is to make, um, you know, it makes these calls over five years, you know, because nothing is really determinable in the short term. But in the long term, you can actually say something could be um, likely to perform or not. Um, and that's why we're going to have that running time. And then I'm going to give you two different numbers for my Bayes number. One is counting six months ago, and one is um, going to include everything, which is that yellow. And basically, yellow is going to represent the moment I bought it, whether it's up, the project's price is lower or higher. Um, and you know, uh, this is a, this is a false case. This is a true case um, for projects that are um, in the green, even if it was like a week ago. Um, but remember, those things aren't going to be super uh, reliable because um, in the short run, we don't have, uh, you know, things are more reliable in the long run. Okay, so um, regarding the, what we're going to be doing, um, to look at Bayes, what Bayes does, uh, the Bayes formula, is it will give me the percent probability of my uh, project of being right. So basically, um, I'll get more in depth into this explanation. I'll even do a visuals to make it look less complicated because this you might see this and think it looks complicated. But in the future, in this video, we're going to make it look super simple. Um, but for now, so we have H in this project, right? And H is th that any given project that we're analyzing is um, going to be um, a strong performer. Um, so, you know, we're going to say that these projects, uh, you know, the hypothesis H is that the, that the project actually is a strong performer. And then, the, you know, um, and then not H is basically that it's not a strong performer. And then, um, you know, E given H is the, the, you know, the hypothesis and the evidence is the model, you know, and so this is the probability that the model output is true given the hypothesis H is also true. And the hypothesis being, you know, what we could only observe in the future. When we do something with this, when we analyze a project, we cannot analyze it today because we don't know how it's going to perform. But in the future, uh, this is where you will actually know when we evaluate what happened in the past. And what would happen in the past will help our understand our model's accuracy up until now. And I could also, you know, my project, my project's going to be honing in on what is true. So, um, and then P uh, not H is the probability that the model, out, model output is true 
Um, and the hypothesis is false, that, that the project, like my model said, oh, buy this, and it was false. So, you know, um, that's what these things are going to be. Now, before I get started, uh, one of the things to realize is we are, I'm still in the beginning stages of, of the crypto journey still. You know, I've been in the space for a while, but the way I see it is in the beginning of investing, you're going to be spotty and then, but you're going to hone in, hone in on a result. Um, and, and that is what I, I would say I'm like right here in my experience and, you know, and we're going to try to hone this model in and get it down to the actual numbers. And I'm going to keep iterating and iterating and iterating until I can, you know, like I could actually depend on these numbers and be quantifiable about my approach so that I can get the results I want and, you know, uh, make this thing, uh, pull it in, uh, to, uh, the results. And finally, the results of all this math is what goes into my patron section of my analysis, which is the allocation exposure. Okay, so now let's get into what exactly the math is going to help us do. So this is a, the entire, imagine this box is the entire crypto uh, space. And the red is all the losing projects and the green is all the winning projects. And, um, you know, this is the winning subgroup and this is the losing subgroup. And what the model, the goal is that the model will have a higher allocation, a higher probability of saying yes in the winning group than it will in the losing group. And, but it will obviously make bad calls. That's, you know, that's part of life. Uh, but hopefully the model, we can make this get smaller percentage wise and make this bigger percentage wise. Um, and so what I did on this six month basis is I got nine correct calls and, or actually it's 10, um, but because uh, I just re realized BNB, I didn't include that one in there. But right now it's, we'll just go with nine and six. And so ba basically the way Bayes works is the right calls divided by the right calls plus the wrong calls equals um, the percent chance that the model is correct. You know, simply put, very simple stuff. So these are all my correct calls. You know, where the, where the model said, yes, this is a strong performer, and it was indeed a strong performer. And this is um, the wrong performer. And, you know, remember, um, in the short run, like for the, for the sub sticks, you know, what, we're doing the analysis where I simply make money. We're not even doing the analysis of whether or not it was right. It will actually get smaller um, when it comes to the actual one-third projects. And it also gets smaller in the short run. Um, but right now... Um, hopefully, I'm not going over the place all over the place too much, but that's the way my mind is. You know, it goes all over the place. But okay, so in the given all the data, including like last week, including Sato, which was the last project, the project still is at forty percent, which is actually pretty good. Um, and so this is the actual you know breakdown, and you can see the white ones are over six months old, and um, the project actually did pretty decently at. Um, assessing winners and losers. You know, I missed Luna, which was pretty bad. Um, but, um, you know, it was pretty good at, at, at hitting good targets and it missed a few. I mean, it made some bad calls. Um, but you notice in the six months, the yellow here, like um, I, I, I did an, an analysis both of the um, everything six months past and everything, including like last week. And you can see that I, my model is correctly throwing more projects into the poor performance range, um, you know, uh, you know, recently saying, but you know, like some of these, it's like, oh, I will buy, right? Some of these I will buy in the future. That's what it basically, you know, but it said don't buy right now. And that's good because it put it in the poor performance category. So you can see this newer stuff, the model actually did it correct at saying, um, you know, it, it threw more projects into the don't buy category, which is exactly what we want this thing to do is even as the product, as the market moves up and down, um, it starts throwing things into the don't buy category if they're going to perform poorly in the short term. And then maybe I'll hit them again with the model in the future. And, you know, like it'll say, oh, like, yeah, actually it is a buy, you know, so the basically, you know, that kind of thing. Um, and so you can see like I have some major wins here um, and these are like the projects where I made a lot of money and these are the projects where I lost money and in, in crypto, um, you know, the, like some of them did really bad. Like, so I pretty much consider it like it lost all the money and I set that to the side. Now, remember, this is for five years time frame. Um, and so, you know, some of these I might actually sell 
Um, some of my, I might hold, like, I'm going to hold this one forever and I'm going to hold, you know, this one forever, this one forever, you know, like I'm going to hold these projects for, you know, forever. And then we'll really know as time goes on, the closer we get to five years, the, the more, you know, in this process, um, the more we'll be able to depend on the model's accuracy. But right now everything's kind of spotty and it's running with live data and we're, you know, like, so the, the, the math is kind of choppy, but we're just now at the beginning stages of incorporating it. And so what the Bayes formula now is just allowing me to say is 40% accuracy that the project will be up in, in a re reliable amount of time. Um, and so... Um, given when we take the base number uh, of 40% and we put it in, I'm going to say the average crypto, we're going to say I don't invest in projects unless there's like a 5x or more. So let, I use the worst numbers that I can think of because I always want to use the worst numbers. So I use the, the, you know, even though my base formula says in the six month category, you know, it's more reliable, 60%, I'm going to go with the 40% because I'm always going to use the worst number that um, I can come up with reliably for the base number. And given the worst number that we have, I'm going to put plug that into the um, Kelly formula, which tells me uh, the amount of allocation I should take. So at 5x our investment, you know, which is, you know, uh, is about, you know, one of the average projects, you know, 5x, 10x, 1000x. And then, you know, given the percent, the probability 40% that the model's right. And, and it says ultimately the output ends up being 28%. And that's extremely large. And guys, what I hope that this highlights is that crypto is a huge opportunity. Like it's saying, hey guys, there is like, like if a project has the opportunity to 5X and, you know, there's a reasonable chance that it can do that, you should be adding a significant portion of your portfolio to it. Now, I'm not going to add 28% of my portfolio. I'm actually going to divide that by 100. Um, and the reason why is there's plenty of opportunity in crypto, but there's nowhere else that you're ever going to see like allocations like that. Um, that are going to say, oh man, you could like five extra money. Like crypto is the place to be. And uh, I don't care if it's a bear market. I'm going to be more conservative. Um, but I am definitely, this is the only place I care to be about until these, you know, until the numbers start coming down, until the, you know, the chances of 5Xs, 10Xs. But, you know, honestly, uh, this is where the future of venture capital is going to be because you can get access to true venture companies and it's permissionless. So that's why I love crypto because it's not putting you behind some wall saying you can or cannot participate. So, you know, you could be just like a venture investor and do what I'm doing here and get better and better and better and hopefully uh, do what the billionaires do. And, you know, hey, I'm already financially independent and I hope to get up to, you know, to, to a significant uh, size in the future. All right, guys. So um, that's basic, the basics of what, we're, what I'm saying with uh, allowing for math to help us, uh, where we're going to use ROI base and Kelly criterion um, to, you know, to correlate closer to um, that result. You know, and, 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 and an iterative process, you know, it's, it, the math is less reliable and more reliable over time. So we're going to hone in, hopefully, and make this thing pay out uh, and, and, and get closer and closer to, you know, like better and better numbers. But for now, uh, that's the basics. Um, you know, I think I covered everything. I hope I wasn't too all over the place. Um, but as you can see, the model is roughly operating at a 40% base number right now. Um, you know, and that's just like, uh, even including, you know, projects from the last week, etc. you know, um, uh, as we're, in, you know, we're in a bear market and it's, you know, like, so, you know, that's uh, pretty good, I think. All right, guys. Um, but I'm going to try to get this thing to be better than that. And then eventually we'll actually get it, um, to actually hit like whether or not it's 30% numbers as well. And we'll just keep honing it in. Um, but for now, that's uh, where we're at. Okay, guys, I hope to bring the highest quality crypto uh, information uh, in all the space. And I'm going to keep honing in on um, high yield opportunities. But remember, 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 nothing here is investment advice. This is my own record. This is what I'm doing. Um, and I'm simply taking my approach and I'm putting it out there uh, to the world. All right, bye.